it's a winter afternoon the sun's coming in it's all very pretty we're here at the st john's precinct back behind the clock back behind newtown road this monument behind me is built for an adult male it probably would have been taken down except it was so large it belonged in here because this was a big cemetery but really it was mostly a cemetery for children specifically orphans when we think about the convict transportation system we think mostly about adults being taken out from England to Van Diemen's Land but their kids were also brought into it after they were out here a lot of them had children you have to wonder how a female convict could get pregnant but it definitely happened and when it did their kids would be taken off them there are also kids here that were the children of the people that lived in van diemen's land the island before the english even showed up they were taken away from their parents even though they were still alive living perhaps only a few miles away it's all been cleared you wouldn't know that this was a graveyard but it is And there's a stillness and an uncomfortableness about being here. It all just rather seems kind of unfair. Come on, Harry. Come on. This is what the St John's Precinct was to have looked like when the church and orphan school was initially approved by Governor Arthur in 1830. But the building's architect, John Lee Archer's full vision was never realised. The final building lost bits along the way. In this 1858 sketch by Emily Bowring, we see the site much as it is today. The mounted turret on top of the clock tower was never added. In this 1860 photo, we see an empty boulevard leading west from Newtown Road. At the bottom of the picture are two gatehouses. These were built later designed by James Blackburn. The trees that now line St John's Avenue weren't there then. They were in fact planted in 1897 to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Apart from the fagus, there are no native deciduous trees in Australia. The arriving Europeans planted them because it made them feel less homesick. The church's tower contains a clock, which was made in London in 1818 by Thwaites and Reed. The clock's bell was donated as a royal gift from King William IV. But all of this is superficial. The purpose of the entire facility was to lock up children, loosely classified as being orphans. Many of the children were those of convicts. Aboriginal children kidnapped from their families and country were also sent there. An added layer of evil would see siblings separated once they were admitted, to the point that they were never allowed to see each other at all. One of the main aims of such an orphan school was to remove from public view certain types of children. Apologists for the system claim that religion and education would transform and socialise children into respectable, industrious adults. The orphan schools are an integral component of the convict system. Kids in these places were subjected, as adult convicts were, to regimentation, discipline, punishment, control and abuse. 6,000 kids were incarcerated here. More than 200 of them were buried in the precinct grounds. What grave markers there might have been were later removed and placed in piles down at the Cornelian Bay Cemetery. The facility ran for five decades from 1828, finally closing in 1879. And for a long time, Tasmanians tried very hard not to think about the inequity that occurred here. In 2022, two bronze castings by the Irish sculptor Rowan Gillespie were erected in memorial. To a small dog, they might almost be real children. This bridge was made by convicts in 1840 and it still exists in Newtown and every day 
thousands of people cross it. At the north end of Newtown Road and the bottom end of Creek Road, it exists at the spot where Newtown ends. The original bridge is hidden. So here we are walking across the bridge on the more modern bridge made of reinforced concrete and steel and all the good stuff. But beneath us, down there, is a very old bridge and that's made of sandstone. And it was a very pretty bridge, but you could never sustain the amount of bandwidth of automobiles going across the top. It's kind of like a meat pie on top of a fine pastry. A bit further along Creek Road, there used to be something interesting. This 1885 painting by Horton Forrest is called Watermill at Newtown Hobart. Alexander Calder built the mill in 1841, but in this painted depiction, the mill was already a ruin. The mill remained a prominent landmark in Hobart until around 1900, when what was left of it was torn down. This aerial footage is from 2018, on the very edge of Newtown, at the top end of Creek Road, there used to be an abandoned reservoir. Local artist Tom O'Hearn climbed inside and drew a giant mural on the concrete floor. He called it Scabby Moon Man. Hidden within the cylinder, no one knew it was there. The only way to see it was from the sky. Today there's a new building restructured and the only thing to see from above are solar panels. Very close by is Mariah Street, a dead end that provides access to the substation. The street gets its name from the houses that used to be there, 12 identical weatherboard cottages. The Twelve Apostles had been built on Mariah Island in 1888. In 1935 the state government relocated them to this corner of Newtown as low income housing. We're walking up here underneath the high tension power lines. Over to the right, there's a fence with graffiti and barbed wire on the top of it. And over here, there's this plant life, and that's sort of symbolic of what these power lines have done. This side is just that little bit nicer than that side. Now, in recent history and in contemporary times, as in right now, today, there's a thing called the flannel curtain or the flannel net curtain, depending on who you're talking to. But that's a thing, people don't talk about it publicly. It's a thing said in hushed tones or loud tones among friends but to call it a curtain is kind of appropriate because these power lines do hang across the suburb of Newtown. Some people think the flannel net curtain begins where the Pizza Hut is, other people think it begins a little bit further north where Creek Road is. I think if it is a real thing it begins and ends with these power lines and it just radiates out in each direction. There's a monster coming over the hill.